Hi, everyone, and welcome to my kitchen. I'm Kimberly Knox, and you're in KK's Big Kitchen. So welcome to the third video we're going to be doing featuring this little beauty right here, pumpkins. You're going to see them everywhere in the fall. They're fantastic, of course, for carving, but they are loaded with nutrients that your body just loves up during the fall, especially. So we're going to be making an easy German, creamy German uh pumpkin soup. It was inspired by my friend that just got back from traveling and she had some soup there. So I am the creator of the book, Simple Cooking for Vitality. It really helps you understand about the different areas of the body, the food that gives them healing information and just simple food, loving the food that loves your body back and um, really just making healthy, simple and delicious. So, of course, this book has soup recipes, two of my favorite in here, the creamy butternut squash soup, absolutely delicious. Of course, we don't use any dairy. We're not using, this is a gluten-free, dairy-free book. So we're actually using, and we're using today, we're using coconut cream. It's a very high energy milk and cream replacement. That's fantastic. Your body really loves it. It's able to generate energy from that. There's another recipe here I love. I've been making this since... I know the, the mid nineties, at least I used to love this a ginger carrot, ginger soup. So um, this is in the, let's see, it's in the bone marrow stomach meridian section and just really easy, simple recipes. So first of all, what we're going to do, and this is very simple and I don't get too excited, but we are putting some white wine in here. I don't even drink, but I, uh, I got the crema uh, to put in here. Uh, it's going to give it a, a, a nice tang, just like my um, cauliflower risotto. It's going to cook off and it's perfect. So we're going to roast the pumpkin. Now you can roast the entire thing. Just grease it all up with coconut oil, put some holes in it, roast it, and then you cut it and scoop it all out. Today, we're going to cut it first. Um, so if you don't have a sharp knife, you might want to use um, option number one, but you're going to need a very sharp knife. and the Santuco knives here, they have a nice curved edge. They help you with cutting through here. They're nice and thin. So uh, I just got these sharpened, so they should be okay. We're just going to cut this in half and see how the tip helps you rock through the pumpkin. <clears throat> so any squash or pumpkin, uh, any squash can be cut with this. You might need to just rock it down and then Bang it on the board a little bit, but you're going to get through it. <laughs> so that's all fun. And then just crack it open. And uh, <clears throat> I'm just going to cut a little on the bottom here so it lays flat on the pan. Okay. So what I do to scoop this out is uh, I'm just going to use a deep spoon like this and I'll just do one and you'll get the idea of it so you just use the edge of the spoon to scoop around and you're going to want to uh, if you want to save the seeds go ahead if you don't want to so you can just put them in a bowl so nothing glamorous about this we're just scooping up the insides so let me grab a bowl to put these in and we will be right back. The oven is already preheated to 400 degrees and we're just going to roast it for 30 minutes. So we pretty much got this handled here. You see, you're just using the edge of your spoon and then I'm just scooping it into a nice prep bowl here. Just in case you want to keep the seeds. I don't know. I might. <laughs> I might toast. I might have plenty of pumpkin seeds, but... It's nice to do real ones like that. So here we are. You want to uh, have a roasting pan here, or you can just use a flat like cookie sheet type pan, depending on the size. This is a small sugar pumpkin. What I'm going to do is I'm going to brush it with coconut oil, and then I am going to, I, I like to do this to uh, all of my squashes when I cook them. There's an acorn squash there. You've seen us, I, I have a whole 
video on a beautiful stuffed acorn squash. Check that out. That's wonderful for this time of the year. So here we are. We're getting all the pumpkin nutrients loaded with uh, different carotenoids. Okay, those are antioxidants. Let's just say beta carotene. That's the orange that you see in carrots and all of the orange veggies, which converts to the antioxidant vitamin A, which is great for your skin, your eyes, your tissue repair. This is really, really wonderful. Plus, you're getting lots of really good potassium. You're getting vitamin B6. You're getting vitamin C. You're getting iron. You're getting fiber. <sighs> Pumpkins are amazing. Okay. So we're just going to tempt it. Let me just get a little bit of sea salt. <laughs> we're going to tempt it with a little, I don't like a foil touching the food. So I just put a little bit of parchment paper over it. The steam's going to come up. It's going to help it cook nicer. And then cover this with some foil. And we're going to put this in the oven 30 minutes. So during that time, we're going to be able to chop onions. We're going to be able to chop up the garlic, measure out the wine. If you want to have some wine, you can have some wine. Very simple ingredients. And uh, we will be right back. Let's get this in the oven. Hey guys, so while uh, the squash, I mean, the pumpkin was cooking, I had to walk to Whole Foods to get some white pepper because I thought I was, I thought I had it, but I'm out. So let's check the squash. Oh, we're just checking to see if it's pork tender. I'm not stealing. Let's grab it out. Really get a fork, <laughs> the easiest way, and uh, just give it a. You know, it's got to cook longer, so we're gonna put it back in. And let that cook. We'll come back and we'll prep up the other stuff and get the um the Dutch oven going. Okay, so we'll be right back. So um, if you haven't already got your little prep bowls, these are really great to get. I think these are seven, about seven inches wide. See the size here. You can get these on Amazon. It's really great to have a lightweight stainless steel, uh, aluminum, whatever this is. <laughs> lightweight, it's not going to break. Wash is really easy. They stack up nice and nice. All right, so we're just doing a small... Uh, yellow onion and <clears throat> we're gonna dice it. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna use an immersion blender. You just want the flavor to penetrate the soup before it gets blended up. So really we're just cutting up onion. We're gonna make that translucent along with some garlic. The whole house will start to smell amazing. Your body's going to start to really want to eat this soup. So I just cut it in half and then I, I cut it like this. It just helps prepare. Um, I actually use my slim knife first and then I use my chef knife to chop it all a little bit more. Uh, so you see you're just putting lines in it like this. Fabulous. Let's get the wine out of the way. And <clears throat> don't forget your board scraper. This is your best $10 purchase right at Williams Sonoma. You can order that online, of course, as well. So just chop through the onion that you've already, because you put the, uh, the lines in it and you already pre cut it a little bit. You don't have to do a ton of chopping. Right, fabulous. Just kind of uniform. So you're smelling the, the fragrance. 
This is the healing property of the onion, by the way, that strong smell. That's the amazing, powerful qualities that it has for the body. And then, you know, one garlic clove is just not enough for me. I'm going to do more. So if you just do one big one or I'm going to actually do one, at least two here. No, I like a lot of garlic, but I don't want to over garlic the soup. Okay, we'll do two. Can always, can always add more <clears throat> to mine. So you might have a little uh, tool that you put the garlic in and it minces it for you. Don't get too worried about, you know, how perfect it is. You just want the flavor to blend in. So if it's chopped up a little bit more, obviously you're going to blend in the flavor, just like in my, I have a recipe for uh, apple sage turkey burgers. So the reason that I shred the apple is to give flavor throughout this symbol here. All right, we got the garlic done. Garlic's got a bowl. So some recipes call for butter. I'm not using butter. I don't have a problem with organic grass-fed butter, but I am, since we're using coconut cream, I'm gonna use coconut oil. It's an excellent uh, oil to utilize, especially at high temperatures. So the pan's heated up nicely. I was popping, uh, was popping popcorn in this. <laughs> um, <laughs> where's my spoon? Hold on. <clears throat> Bring it down just a little bit. <clears throat> so if you can get yourself a Le Creuset Dutch oven, that's one of the main pots from that line that you should indulge in. Perfect for making your soup thin. I'm gonna get the onion a little bit more translucent before I put in the garlic. So we'll get that going. Let me tidy up a bit and we'll be right back to get that all together. So this is when everyone comes into the kitchen and they're like, wow, what are you cooking? That smells amazing. Because onions just smell amazing when they're cooking. So this is perfect. This is how you really get connected to your food. So we got the garlic in there. We're gonna add some sea salt. This is a pink Himalayan. And we're gonna add a quarter teaspoon of white pepper. White pepper's got, I made it kind of a heaping teaspoon. All right, we're letting this uh, cook just a little bit more so everything's fragrant, another three for three to five minutes here. We're waiting on the pumpkin to finish up. We're gonna just turn that down a tiny bit. Let's measure out the wine. And if you're drinking, you can measure out yourself a little. Ooh, it only needs a quarter cup. Sorry, I got a little crazy there. So these are liquid measures, whereas these are dry measures. When you're using liquid, you use one of these. A third of a cup. Maybe a little bit more will be okay. We'll do that. <laughs> okay, it's going to evaporate. <clears throat> so we're just going to have the flavor. The broth that we're using, uh, you can use a... Uh, a, a clean organic free range chicken bone broth or chicken broth or a veggie broth. Um, this plant strong veggie broth is awesome. So we need between one and two cups. So I've just put two cups in here. We don't want the soup to be too thin. So it's gonna depend on how much product puree we get from the pumpkin. So this is just gonna continue to simmer here for a little bit. Um, 
And I am going to test the pumpkin again, and we'll be right back. So this is how you can tell that the pumpkin is done. See how the fork just goes in nice. So we're just gonna let this cool <clears throat> while we finish up this. And then we're gonna peel out the pumpkin. Put that over there. Okay, so the onion and the garlic translucent. We've got in the white pepper. We've got in a little bit of sea salt. We're gonna add in the wine and let this evaporate. So that smells amazing, by the way. <laughs> um, move the broth so we don't spill that. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna get out the pumpkin. So this is something great for you to do. Go out for a walk while you put the pumpkin in the oven and when you come back, then you can just put the whole rest of it together. You see how it peels away from the skin really nice now? So we're just gonna dig dig out the insides and we're gonna put it, uh, just gonna add it to this bowl. So we should have between three and four cups and that's what we want. So just like you do stuffed acorn squash, I mean, technically you could squat, you could stuff a pumpkin with really yummy filling, similar to the one that I do for the acorn squash with the quinoa or rice mixed with onion and garlic. And um, I actually put pear, you could put apple in this, apple and uh, cranberries, a little bit of sage, some cinnamon, you know, make it, you can make this a full meal. A lot of people don't get a lot of pumpkin, especially not a lot of real pumpkin. Most people are eating canned pumpkin. So I just want to, uh, obviously this is better if you can cool it. We'll let that sit for a second. We'll get the main stuff out of this one. Same process. <clears throat> There's a little head. So now the, uh, the wine is evaporating off and we're gonna be left with the flavor, which is perfect. And as soon as that's ready, we're gonna be adding the squash, adding the broth. We're gonna let that cook up for a little bit. We only add enough broth so it stays nice and thick. Cooks for about 15 more minutes. And then that you're done. You just add in the cream, use your immersion blender and you've got your soup. So I'm really excited for this. Soups are really nourishing. And if you are looking to, you know, lose some weight, I don't diet. What I do is I, I do longer intermittent fasting. Soups are really excellent because they fill you up. They make you feel satiated. They're warming to the stomach. And uh, it's a great meal to have at night when you really want to eat lighter. If I'm extending my fasting, I do not eat past six. Sometimes I don't eat past three, but I eat like a lot of food uh, during the day to really get filled up. And then I just let my body do its thing. So soups are wonderful to have on hand. And of course you can put this into a container, keep it in the refrigerator. You can also freeze some of the soup. I like to do smaller containers, like a two cup, then you have a, a, a nice serving. And you can also use the four cup ball jars, the larger jars. So you see that this is all coming out of here really nice now. I'm just using the mitt here so my fingers don't get hot. Okay, it looks like we got it all. Wonderful. Put this over here. Mm, this is smelling really good. So a little bit of butter will give it a good flavor too. So we're going to put in the pumpkin now. I'm going to add half of the broth and just see where we are. 
let it cook for a little bit. So we're gonna put the cover on. We're gonna let this cook down. <clears throat> and uh, I might put a little bit of, I'm gonna cook it for about 10 minutes, check it, put in a little bit more broth. Uh, seriously, we're pretty much done. And uh, so you can do a lot while the soup is cooking. And uh, we'll see you right back here. So if you like these videos, give me a nice thumbs up, share them, get your notifications, whatever you need to do. Thanks for joining me today in KK's Big Kitchen. Let's check our masterpiece. So we're just squishing down the puree from the pumpkin. Letting it blend in with the onions. I am going to add a little more broth now, and I'm going to turn this down just a little bit. Just another half. I want this to be nice and thick. This is the coconut cream that we're going to put in. So this is a heavier one. This is one you can actually whip. It'll be perfect for this recipe since it does call for a heavy cream. You can just use a regular one as well. And we're going to let that cook for another five minutes. We're going to add the cream and just blend it up with an immersion blender. So simple. So let's finish this up. Beautiful. The whole place smells amazing. All right. So it the temperature is off. And uh, this is what it looks like now. Let's grab so you can see. So it's basically the pulp with the onion. That's why we're going to need to use the immersion blender. Immersion blenders come in two pieces, just like this. Wonderful to have these. Great for soups. Okay, yourself. Um, so we're just going to put in, putting in the thickest part of this. I'll save the rest of it for my vegan chocolate gelato. So I'm just taking off the top here. One of at least a nice half cup. Oops. Without getting too messy. Okay. So you definitely don't want to splatter this on yourself. So go easy. <laughs> Almost done. It's looking really creamy and amazing. Now this immersion blender is taking those on with the onion, smashing it all up with everything else. So all these flavors will be blended together wonderfully. If you don't have an immersion blender, of course you can use a blender. However, this is hot. Sometimes it's really difficult to transport, you know, your hot soup. So we are looking really good here. So this is nice. The end comes off just like that. Stop this. Okay, we're gonna need to have a little taste here. I need a tasting spoon. See what we need. Deliciously creamy. Mm, I can taste the wine. I can taste the, the pepper. I'm probably going to add a little bit more salt. And that's the great thing about salt. You don't over salt and then you can just adjust as necessary. I've cut out a lot of salt in my in my uh, diet, so I don't have a lot here. But I need a little bowl here. Cute. And let's get some. 
Try. Actually, I'll be right back and then we'll check this out with toppings. I wanted to get uh, pumpkin seeds for the top. A little bit of delicious, chunky texture. Look how wonderful that looks, guys. So this is going to taste really rich, but this is different than cream. The coconut milk is an energy type of fat. So it does give you that richness, but the body helps convert this type of fat into energy. It's called MCT, the MCT oil, medium chain. So, it, and, and it's much easier on the liver. So here we go. I'm gonna bring this downstairs for a friend to enjoy with me. Look how delicious this is. Mm. So. If you're in the mood for soups and you want something different, give this a try. Have it with a little bit of white wine, <laughs> um, as there is some in there. So I hope you enjoyed today's uh, soup cooking pumpkin soup special. This is actually the first pumpkin soup I've made. I've made many other soups. So have a wonderful day. Thanks for inspiring me to make this, Annie, from your Germany trip. <laughs>